All right, let's see how this goes. I'm hoping to give a crash course in 95% confidence intervals in six minutes or less. All right, so in a given study, you might see a result like this. It shows you a relative risk reduction and then a bunch of numbers here. Uh, let's break this down. So um, this first number is like the summary. In this case, it's a relative risk, but in other studies, they might report a median, you know, median blood pressure, mean, mean height, mean money spent, whatever. And then you'll see a 95% confidence interval. This is the spread of the data. Um, and there's other ways that you can show the spread of the data, maybe like the interquartile range. Now, maybe you're still a bit confused. Now, this giraffe will come back later on and hopefully really bring to life what on earth a 95% confidence interval is. So, what is a 95% confidence interval? We can play a true-false game here. So, it has a 95% chance of containing the true value, false. It contains 95% of the sample data, false. It indicates that values outside of the 95% confidence interval have a 5% chance of being the true mean. False. It predicts that 95% of the estimates from future studies will fall inside this interval. Again, false. It is a range between two numbers. True. Okay, that's simple. We're off to a bit of a start here. If the study were repeated many times, the true value would fall within the 95% um, confidence intervals 95% uh, of the time, and that is, again, true. I'll repeat that. If the study were repeated many times, the true value would fall in the intervals 95% of the time. If, of course, other assumptions are true that were used to compute the intervals. So um, I'll bring to life an example of where you might see this in a paper. Um, this is a study that I was a part of. And here we were swapping the floors for um, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. And in the results, we wanted to tell the reader, okay, here's the summary of the data. 54% of swabs were positive um, during an outbreak. And the 95% confidence intervals, you know, the spread of the data was from 52% to 56%. And then we contrast that to the summary of the data in non-outbreak periods and again give you the spread thereafter. Um, this is a study that I had nothing to do with, um, but here it was looking at some drug, in this case SGLT2 inhibitors, and then they reported the um, hazard ratio, okay, so again the summary of the data, and then the confidence intervals ranging from 0 0.64 to 0 0.82. So these are a couple types of studies that you might see a 95% confidence interval. Uh, another example, this was a work led by Dr. Mike Kalachi. Um, this here is a forest plot from a meta-analysis. Um, so this is the uh, sort of line of unity or null line. Uh, and then we see that each individual study um, has a point estimate here. So like 2.14 and then the 95% confidence intervals um, thereafter. So you might be scratching your head and thinking, okay, I still don't get it. So let's get back to the idea of these um, giraffes, all right? And, and let's say we find this island of tiny miniature giraffes, and we want to know what's the average size, but also what's the spread. So on this island, it turns out that these um, giraffes are, are truly tiny. All right, this one's 113 millimeters, okay? Um, this one here is 55 millimeters. But how do we come up with a 95% confidence interval? Well, the first thing we want to do is calculate something called the deviation. So what you're doing is you're taking the individual height of the giraffe and subtracting it from the average height of the giraffe, okay? Because remember, this one was 55 millimeters, 106 minus 55. This has a deviation of 51. We take it one step forward and we calculate a standard deviation. How do you do that? Essentially, you're going to add up all the deviations and then do some fancy math, which I won't go into now, but then you have a standard deviation and you have the ingredient to then calculate your 95% confidence interval. So in order to do that, you will um, do 1.96 times the standard deviation that you calculated. Uh, why 1.96? Uh, it's overkill. Uh, we're going to um, skip the explanation for that. And then um, uh, thereafter, you'll just do some simple math. So let's say, for example, in our made up study, you know, the point estimate is two and the standard deviation is 0 0.1. So then to calculate the upper bound of your confidence interval, it's two plus 0 0.1. 
you know, your standard deviation times 1.96. Now you have your upper bound. You do the same thing, but in the opposite direction, you got your lower bound and then boom, Bob's your uncle. You have your point estimate as well as your 95% confidence interval. And loosely, we could say in this case, if this was about the giraffes, we could say, you know, we are 95% confident that the true height of the these adorable giraffes ranges between these two numbers. That is not perfect, and a statistician will quibble with that, but again, this is an introductory talk. So what is a 95% confidence interval? It's a range between two numbers, okay? In general, if you were to repeat the study a hundred times, the confidence interval would contain the true value 95% of the time. Some general rules about 95% confidence intervals. Um, larger studies will typically give a tighter 95% confidence interval. So if you were to measure a thousand giraffes, um, you'd have a much tighter 95% confidence interval than if you had measured four or five giraffes. Um, these tighter 95% confidence rules can be described as being more precise. When your p-value is less than 0.05, typically the 95% confidence interval excludes the null, and we talked about what the null is a few slides back. It is more useful to protect uh, to report a 95% confidence interval than just a p-value. Um, a p-value by itself can be pretty meaningless, whereas a 95% confidence interval gives you so much more information. It's giving you a sense of the distribution of the data, the range of possible values. Uh, and then, as we uh, noted uh, early on, you know, what is a 95% confidence interval? It's a range between two numbers, and if the study repeated multiple times. Um, then the true value would fall within these intervals 95% of the time. Uh, some important acknowledgements, um, the Reddit epidemiology community helped to give some edits and improve this, and then just an incredible resource uh, uh, related to the teacup giraffes um, by these two very smart individuals, so check out that website, and then a great paper as well below. I hope that helps. Uh, leave comments, questions, um, and uh, yeah, that's it.